the video of Steph Curry unable to spin a basketball on his finger. It's gone around the world about five times and has led to everybody trying it. Any of you on this panel? Tim Callishaw, how about Whoa. that, Ramona? Hey, hey, hey. Marcel not, but Tim, I'm impressed. LeBron can't do it, Embiid can't do it, Halliburton can't do it. Tim, do you judge those NBA stars? <laughs> Very disappointing. Let's go around the horn. I can't believe they can't do it. Or I'm more impressed they can't do it. It means they were practicing oh, more importantly. Marcella, you got it at the end. You got it at the end. Here's a little bonus. Calmed it. You got three for that. <laughs> I definitely spun it. Team long. USA News of the Day, Kawhi Leonard out for the Olympics. He had been hampered by injury, and it's now official. The question, who would replace him? Jalen Brown, Jalen Brunson, Derek White, Cooper Flag, maybe? Derek White it is. A third Celtic on the Team USA roster, but not the finals MVP, which Jalen Brown noticed with the monocle, which I always appreciate. All that news coming out with tonight's friendly, maybe not so friendly, versus Canada. Dylan Brooks says, be ready, America. On who you'd pick to replace Kawhi Leonard was right, White the right pick. And on tonight's exhibition around the horn to Ramona Shelburne. I think Derek Wright actually was the right pick to replace him because Kawhi Leonard's on the team for his defense. So what they needed was another point of attack defender. Derek White is the best point of attack defender that they could go out and get right then. It's going to put another chip on Jalen Brunson's shoulder. I'm going to go off the board and say it's going to put a chip on Kyrie Irving's shoulder because I think he would have been a good choice as well. And Jalen Brown, yeah, I mean, that's your teammate. You just won the finals MVP, and I like that he made himself known right there. Okay. He would have been a good choice. Now, we're too, inferring he's, exactly he's talking about the role. roster selection. It could be about the video game cover as well, where Tatum made the cover and not Brown, along with Andrew Wilson. Too. Tim Kalisha, is Derek White the right pick? Yeah, I think so. As Ramona said, I, you got to wonder who's going to defend on this team. You got a team of superstars, mm -hmm. team of guys that are used to scoring 25 a night. Mm -hmm. You need some people out there to grind a little, play a little defense. It does look like they're working hard to keep Jalen Brunson off the team. Uh, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure why, but 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 White can do those things. Marcel Louis Jacques. Yeah, Tony, no drama from me here. I love the Derek White pick. Jalen Brown would have been great. He is a great player, as we just saw on the national stage and final stage. But if 2004 taught us anything, it's that you can't just throw superstars at a problem and expect mm, okay. it to suddenly work. You need guys who are willing to do, like, the uncelebrated things. Play defense, jump passing lanes, contest shots. Derek White, not a guy who's looking to create his own shot, but he's a knockdown shooter when he gets an open look. I, I love it. I think recreating the Celtics' backcourt is going to give in and other countries nightmares. Come Allow me to throw a superstar at a problem. Bob Ryan, I throw you at this problem. I've got three <laughs> panelists saying, ah, it's all right. Uh, Jalen Brown got beef here. Jalen Brunson got beef here. Should Derek White be the replacement for Kawhi Leonard? I don't think Joe Mazzullo and Brad Stevens need this headache about worrying about where is Jalen Brown, where is he going to be now with this. Mm -hmm. They don't need this okay. headache. All right. And they don't need Derek White. I love him. I'd make the devil's advocate case for him. I'd represent him. I'd adopt him. But they already got one guy like that on the team. It's called Jeru Holiday, okay? Mm -hmm. Jalen Brunson is the breakout star of the last two years in the NBA and has earned a right to be so honored as an Olympian. There we period. go. All right. So you do go with Jalen Brunson. Let's talk tonight. It's an exhibition. We call that a friendly. But you hear Dylan Brooks, and you know the history there. He may not be so friendly. What are you watching for tonight, Ramona Shelburne? Well, listen, Dylan Brooks and Canada are part of the reason why the U.S. had to throw all this talent at the problem because they beat the U.S. Yeah, in the FIBA tournament last year in the bronze medal game. Dylan Brooks had 39 points in that game. They're the reason why the, uh, Steph Curry came out and LeBron came out. And so now the U.S. has probably its most talented international team since the Dream Team. Maybe even more talented than the Dream Team. Yes, I'm saying that out whoa, loud. And whoa, let's see. Let's see if whoa. this team... If this amount of talent, there might be 12 <laughs> Hall of Famers on this team. 12. I hear what you're okay? saying. Bob Let's Ryan's, all that talent Bob can solve Ryan's the problem. chin cannot go any higher right now. I know. Life. You have his curiosity and you have his attention. Is this team more talented than the dream team, Bob Ryan? Look, the dream team, we look in retrospect, they were old and they were, they were battered and injured and they, they were so much better than the rest of the world because that's where the world was oh, then, okay? Okay. And healthy, you agree with healthy. Ramona. Yeah, they would. 
So, I mean, I'm just saying the dream team on, on paper with the stars they had is still the most luminous team ever, ever put together. But they were old and injured and, and they didn't have competition. Now, what I'm looking for tonight is to see Canada with their great peripheral players and the, maybe the best backcourt in the, in the tournament. Mm. Uh, how are they going to survive? They don't have a big man you could name. They all are in the federal witness protection program. OK, uh, if Kelly Olenek is your best big man, you're in trouble. So I want to see, and I'm serious, I want to see what Joe Embiid does to destroy them and remind them yeah. that size still does matter. Tim, tonight, USA versus Canada, what to watch for? You know, I, I, Canada has Dylan Brooks, and they have Lou Dort. They got guys to play defense. I want to see who the American players, the USA players are, who are going to defend Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jamal Murray and take on those roles. Mm -hmm. All right. We've been horned. We'll move on. Ball noon. Ball noon. Yes, a loaded afternoon schedule in the hey. W because it's camp day. Look at these summer camp crowds. Great tradition. The biggie was Liberty Sun. Two best records of the league. They threw it down in Connecticut. It delivered. It was tight late. Libs executing on both sides. UNESCO sealing the deal. New York wins. Chicago, Atlanta. It looked like the end of Angel Reese's double-double streak. But with the sky up and a foul going to her, she gets to the free throw line. Look at this. Yo! 11 points, 13 rebounds. That's a double-double. The streak continues. Indy, Mystics. Washington beating the fever. A leg egg laying by Indiana. Caitlin Clark's line here, 29 points. 13 assists, five rebounds, five steals, five turnovers, three blocks. That's a loaded line. Ooh. Tim, number one takeaway from the afternoon of action. My number one takeaway is that Connecticut lost a big game to the Liberty at home. And I hate to say this, given what I've said about the NBA and Bob Ryan has championed it more than I have. Connecticut needs to shoot more threes. They shot 35% oh. on threes. They shot, <laughs> hold on, they shot 36% on 52s. If you're going to shoot the same percentage, then just get the ball to Bonner and let her shoot threes mm. out there. Mm. All right. Takeaway, Ramona hey. Shelburne. You know, I think Angel Reese continuing that double-double streak is so good for her and the league. When she first came into the league, Lisa Leslie told me that people were, were sleeping on her. She goes, I don't care what anybody says. Anybody who can get double-doubles like that, who can offensive rebound like Angel Reese does, can do that in the WNBA. It's going to translate. And I think she's she's giving Caitlin a run for money in that Rookie of the Year race. I think We've heard about that. We've long. heard quite a bit about that. Bob Ryan, number one takeaway from this afternoon. Well, by the way, a belated happy birthday this week to Lisa Leslie, the greatest pivot player that NBA, NBA's ever had. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, mm -hmm. uh, Mike, you know what my takeaway is? There's one reason why these games were won and why we're doing this. You know what that reason was? That reason was the one, the person who had the big numbers today. It's, this is the tribute to what Caitlin Clark has done to shed light and to give all these other great players a chance to finally be recognized by people like, yeah, me. So uh, that's what my takeaway is. And she's getting it, and she's no myth. And she is just a phenomenal player, and those passes of hers are, under, are underappreciated. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know where you were going there. I thought, I mean, we're talking about him this afternoon because of the summer camp day that the WNBA traditionally does for campers. A lot of baby the shark. Games in the afternoon. <laughs> Marcel Louis Jacques, takeaway. Oh, that's. That's the one. Monster game by Caitlin Clark. Don't get me wrong. Angel Reese continuing to make history. But what stood out to me was the WNBA's, I guess, dedication to that core fan base and their day one fans by continuing to do this camp day, giving young girls a chance to go see their heroes, go see their favorite yeah. players. I love that because a game like Liberty Sun, that could be a primetime game. Those are two best teams. Yeah, in some the have argued right that it should be primetime, that they're, they're missing a date here between the two best teams in the league that should be on international television. It could be, but this is very grassroots of the WNBA. I appreciate what they're doing for their fans here. Mm -hmm. One more story here. Chris Paul had his intro conference to the San Antonio Spurs yesterday, and he said he came to hoop, not coach. Quote, I come to hoop. I'm not a coach. End quote. How do you read that, Bob Ryan? Uh, I hope he doesn't mean it because that, you don't think the reason they want him is, is to help mentor Wembyana and, and, and set some examples all along. So whether he likes it or not, he's going there as an assistant surrogate coach. No matter what they tell him and no matter what he thinks now. Marcel? 
I honestly, I respect his decision, he, wanting to play and try to contribute rather than ride the bench for a title. Kind of like what he was doing with Golden State, but I digress here. He's mm. not one of those stars that just wants hey. to be carried to their first ring for the sake of a Hall of Fame argument. He's like, look, man, I might not win a ring, but I still got a couple good years. I want these memories. I want to show that I still have it. Go on and do your thing, CP. Tim Kalisha. I love the fact that he acknowledged that the player this past year, all the NBA players talk about more after a game is Victor Wembanyama. He, people are that fascinated with this guy's skills, and now he's going to see him up close and, as Bob said, help him, help him develop. Mona Shelburne. I, I do too, Tim. He he did this with Shea Gilgis Alexander a couple years ago in Oklahoma City when people thought Chris Paul was on his way out. He didn't have much left. And Chris told me he said that actually breathed new life in his career, being around young guys like that. And then he helped mold Shea into the player he is now, MVP candidate. I think this is so good for Victor. He's he's competitive. He wants to win. Chris Paul still wants to play. He still wants to win. I think this is like the best. I understand the fit. I get it. But those words that I'm not here to coach, you know, I mean. Is, 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 is he saying he something there play. that, you know? Yeah, yeah pop. So like, how much of a coach do they really need? Taking a break. Fire cell next. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Gundy's media day availability and how he talked about and how he views star running back Ali Gordon's DUI. I want to talk about that. Let's take a listen to part of Gundy. I looked it up, and it was based on body weight. Not to get into the legal side of it, but I thought really two or three beers or four. I'm not justifying what all he did. I'm telling you what decision I made. Well, I thought I've probably done that a thousand times in my life. He's going to play, and um, I'm going to do what I think, what we think is best for Oklahoma State football, uh, and I think it's best for Ollie to play. Uh, if there's any punishment, it's make him carry the ball 50 times in the first game. Gundy clarified later on Twitter, my intended point at Media Days was that we're all guilty of making bad decisions, not a reference to something specific. Ramona Shelburne, how'd you hear it all? I mean, his bad decision was trying to find excuses for drunk driving. Like, I don't think that's a good thing to go try to make excuses for him. He obviously did some research on this, and he was like, let's find a way to explain this, that I can still play this guy in the first game here and give him 50 carries. Tim Kalashow? I'm going to buy one thing he did, nothing that he said, but one thing he did, because we've all been to tons of media days and press conferences, and players under any kind of scrutiny are hidden from the media. He took Ollie Gordon to Las Vegas. He made him answer questions to multiple media outlets. And, he put, and, and, and in a time when coaches can lose players at the drop of a hat because they make money and they can transfer, that's, a, that's a somewhat of a courageous thing to do. I hear that. This is, it's also not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the words he used. He overshadowed even... I'm talking about what he did. Understood. Understood. Well, I'm talking about what he did. Okay. Marcel Louis-Jacques. I can't believe what he said. Like, we were going to do what's best for Oklahoma State football. Of course, playing your best player is going to be in the best interest of Oklahoma State football. But that's not what this is about. This is about letting your player know that he made a mistake and not talking about it with the casualness of picking a grape out the packaging at the grocery store. Like, oh, we've well, all done it. That's not the proper tone to take with this guy. I think suspending him for one game would have been an easy decision here, not brushing it off like, oh, well, we all do it. It's no big deal. It's This is a huge miss here from Mike Gundy. Bob Ryan. It's so much BS, of course. I'm selling all of it. And the fact is that he was telling half the truth. Half of the truth is that he was doing what's best for Oklahoma State football, as Marcel just said. We all know that. Let me ask a question to like, uh, all on the panel. Do you think uh, if the player in question were a backup cornerback that uh, he would uh, not be facing a bit of a suspension? Let's be serious about it. And by the way, if you lose a player, Tim, go steal somebody else's. That's the name of the game these days. I'm sure Gundy would be good at that. <laughs> the overall callousness and the overall casualness both experience there and then nationally, this country, the way it views DUI. That's the alarming and the headline here. We'll move on. Yankees lose again in Tampa. Hal Steinbrenner and Brian Cashman were in the house to see the free fall continue. They said they wanted to see big changes in the way the team was playing, and they walked into yet another loss. Tim, buy or sell a big change coming with a, a change maybe at the manager position or in the lineup or anything in the GM position, a big change coming for this, this team. 
This has become a bad team, Tony, and it's and it's been ongoing for almost a month now. And yes, if, if it does mean a managerial change, Yankee fans will be happy. If it meant a general manager change, Yankee fans Ooh. would be ecstatic. A lot of people don't know how Cashman has survived this many years with with so few trips to a world. But Series. physically being on site, do you believe that makes this now a real? You know, it, it may just be it may just be for show. It may be say, oh, I'm concerned. I'm going to show up for some games. Marcel, how do you but see it? People would like it to be more. Hey, man, like it's not fun and it's not comfortable, but nothing whips you into shape like your boss coming. I remember I was cutting up in school in eighth grade. My dad randomly popped up in the back of the classroom. I, that day sucked, but I was the most productive student I have ever been in my like, wow. school career. Wait, 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 wait. So, yeah, wait your dad showed up to your school to make sure oh, you yeah. were doing your work? That, all right, Mr. All right. Louis, shock points to you. That is I will yeah. never forget. You'll never forget. I will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Bob Ryan. <laughs> Well, yeah, them showing up as he's cast for show is very symbolic, and I think it sends a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, if Daddy were still around, Aaron Boone would have been gone, and, and either been, <laughs> Billy Martin he would have been fired or rehired at some point in the process. <laughs> now, yeah, George you know, and Billy aren't walking through that door. Bob. <laughs> their failure has been on both offense and defense. But I want to point out that of the 16 losses in this five and 16, seven have been by seven runs or more, including in there four nines, a 12, and a 17. So I think the fact is that the pitching is the This isn't problem. just a losing streak. You're right. It's a free fall in the way they're losing and in the hustle plays they're giving up. Ramona Shelburne, to you. Look, you remember when Brian Cashman at the winter meetings had this big tirade because everyone was criticizing him for the analytics, and he goes, we'll see. And they sounded so good for the first two months of the year because <laughs> they had the best record in baseball. But guess what? Last 21 games, starting pitchers for the Yankees, 7.04 ERA. That's why they're losing. As Bob pointed out, these are lopsided scores. These, well, when they pitch, they don't hit. When they hit, they don't pitch. This is what a bad team looks exactly. like. But actually, since June 15th, no team in baseball has a, a bad a run as the Yankees have had this year. The entire year. Those are just the worst in that streak. That's the worst there is. And, and it's Tampa and it's Baltimore this weekend. They could be out of the playoffs Ooh. by the All-Star break. Rubble. For a team that was Rubble. the first of 40 wins. Ramona Shelburne. And Tim Kalashaw, Marcel Louis Jacques, and Bob Ryan in showdown. And if Marcel starts to trail in showdown, his dad's coming to check him out. I'm just <laughs> I never know who's sitting so in the there. back of the room. <laughs> Big series, Philly, LA. And the Phillies getting off right quickly with the salami from Trey Turner. Final was 10 1 Philadelphia. Zach Wheeler did leave early because of back stiffness. The Dodgers, they're pitching woes. Tyler Glasnow is now hurt. Kike Hernandez was pitching for them last night. Bob, how big is a big series in July, and who is the bigger four? Well, not as big as a big series in September, obviously, but I think that the Dodgers are the team in trouble, if you were and that they needed this thing to, to straighten things out a little bit. Uh, Philadelphia just reinforced what they already know, that they're the best team mm. in, the, in the East. Marcel? Uh, it's big for Major League Baseball. This is their time, July, right? Like the spotlight is solely on baseball in America. And so to have the two best teams in the National League competing, I, I think it's a big deal. And it's bigger for the Phillies. Dodgers are still the betting favorite to win the NL pennant. So to beat them like this, I mean, it's always a confidence boost, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a confidence boost for Marcel. Showdown to the Reese Hines takeover. Promoted Monday afternoon. ML debut Monday night, 449-foot home run. Encore performance yesterday for game number two, 458-foot home run. Marcel, what does day three bring for Mr. Hines? <laughs> he only needs 325 feet worth of home run to pass Trevor Story for longest total distance of home runs in their first Is that right? Favorite. That is an incredible I think he stat. Does it. Oh, I love I it. I think he does it. <laughs> Squeak it over the left field wall, and you got it, big man. Bob Ryan. Uh, didn't we go through this last year with De La Cruz? Who's scouting these guys? These guys deserve a raise, that's for sure. Right, yeah. And by the way, anytime you can add a good young black player into baseball, that is a big well, deal. I welcome I that. am blown away by the stat work from Marcel. So that's in the history of baseball. We've been tracking it for a long time, baby. The longest two home runs to start your career. Wow, we'll move on. Video of Steph Curry on every little spin of basketball. That's our showdown three. All right, it's gone wild. Everyone is shocked that Curry can't do it. LeBron struggled to do it on camera. Halliburton, Embiid struggled to do it on camera.
Does it have you thinking less of these superstars not being able to spin a basketball on their finger? Around the horn, Marcel. Man, they're Tony. They're just like me for real, man. Like I know that the pro athletes and all that, but I mean, this is kind of it's hard to do. It's hard to do. I've never felt more connected to the NBA and its superstars than I have in this moment. All right. The only two skills I didn't master in basketball were dunking and spinning a ball on my finger, okay? I have <laughs> no list with these guys. Uh, They've been working on the real stuff. And by the way, what it does mean is that they don't, none of them have a career, post-career, as a globetrotter. Bob, one more skill. I will humbly uh, volunteer that you did not master. We're shooting the three-point shot. Because there was that in your time, and you hate it. I know how much I know how I you had, do you. I had three-point range with my one-hand set, believe uh, me. Oh, yes, but no lines to shoot from. Antoine Louis Jacques, young man, getting the FaceTime. <laughs> That's a hey, shout out to my dad. He definitely got the win for me today. But we're talking U.S. soccer here. About a week and a half from one of the most embarrassing things that the United States has uh, experienced in international competition, being grouped out of a Copa America tournament that we were hosting. I don't want to talk about Greg Berhalter. I want to talk about the next coach that needs to lead the United States, Jurgen Klopp. He just retired from coaching club ball, but throw enough money at him, I promise he's going to come. There Make it, it happen. We're on a 23 and a half hour break. See you tomorrow.